we'll see uh, what is negative binomial regression and how do we build uh, a negative binomial regression model uh, in R. Uh, this is a type of regression model that we use to, to model uh, count data. Only when the, uh, the variance of the data uh, is high compared to the mean. So this is one condition that differentiate a Poisson regression from the negative binomial regression. And we call that type of data as over dispersed data. So this is uh, the main difference. Over dispersion is something that differentiates a negative binomial uh, regression from that of a Poisson regression. So a researcher wants to study the attendance behavior of school students. And we have dependent variable as attendance of students, different students. And then we have independent variable as the type of program a particular student is enrolled to and the uh, score in maths. Okay, so there are two independent variables. One variable is uh, the number of days of absence uh, by a student. Here is the data. So we have just summarized the data using uh, summary. Now we have gender uh, for female and male and we have score on maths. So we are not going to use gender. So we'll only use two independent variables, uh, maths and a program one is enrolled to and days absent is the dependent variable. So this is the dependent variable and the two independent variable is this one is independent variable one. This is independent variable two. All right. Uh, if you look at the distribution of the data, you can see that uh, this is a categorical variable. So the program you are enrolled to, a student enrolled to is a categorical one. There are three different programs, general, academic and vocational. The general, uh, 40 students enrolled to uh, general programs, 167 in uh, academic and 107 in vocational. And uh, the variable maths is a continuous variable. Uh, days absence, which is a dependent variable, is again a continuous variable, right? Number of days somebody is absent, but that's a count, right? That's exactly why we are using a negative binomial uh, regression model instead of a uh, normal regression model. So this is the distribution of the data. So we have got count of students with respect to the uh, days absent and that's uh, we have uh, you know distributed uh, with respect to the different academic programs. The first one is for general, the second one is for academic uh, and the third one is for uh, vocational and the last one is overall. So when you combine all three. A negative uh, binomial regression models follows what is known as negative binomial distribution and that's exactly uh, more or less like this. Okay. And you can see this distribution is followed in almost all section of this data, whether it's uh, general, academic or vocational. Now this looks like uh, a negative binomial distribution. Uh, and that's one reason why uh, we have gone ahead with it. Of course, it's a count data. So from that itself, uh, the two most popular uh, regression models used. One is Poisson and the other one is negative binomial. Uh, the second thing to look at is whether there is a dispersion or not. And here there is a dis dis dispersion. You can see the mean of this data is very different from the uh, variance, right? Wherever you have, you know, large uh, variance and, you know, the mean is much less compared to that, you go ahead with a negative binomial distribution. And here you can see very uh, easily. The mean uh, wouldn't be, you know, more than somewhere here. Uh, and, and the distribution, uh, so the variance is, you know, spread across a very large region where the mean is much less. Okay. So that is uh, the uh, the main reason why you are going out we're going ahead with negative binomial regression instead of a Poisson regression okay and you can verify that statistically also you just calculate uh, the mean and you know variance uh, of you know the data and you can easily uh, verify that so one is a negative binomial regression the other one is Poisson regression i've already said third one is OLS regression with log transformation that means you take the log transformation of the dependent variable and then uh, build an ordinary least square regression which is very normal multiple linear regression that also can be used okay 
Uh, now the reason why we are you know ruling out poison regression is because there is over dispersion right over dispersion and what does that mean i'll just repeat uh, the uh, variance uh, is much higher compared to the mean and that's uh, over dispersion and that's why we're going the first one which is negative binomial uh, regression so for the demo purpose we'll go ahead the first one you can of course build the third model all is regression with log transformation and compare that with the negative binomial regression model so how do we perform this regression we'll use this this uh, function nb which stands for negative binomial and it's there in the glm package so we are using glm.nb and the dependent variable is days absent independent variables are maths and programs and the data that we are giving is uh, this one and when we run this we get this result and then um, yes so what is of interest to us is the coefficients and these are the ones which we, we will interpret as part of interpreting the uh, results we also need to look at the uh, diagnostic statistics like deviance it has to be as minimum as possible um, and then uh, also the akai information criteria which also has to be as minimum as uh, if you possibly can have now the independent value of maths has uh, the standardized estimate the estimate as um, negative 0 0.005 okay so one thing is that um, somebody's score on uh, somebody scoring high on mathematics is less likely to be absent so that's what it says okay whether it's, it's significant or not yes it is significant the value is less than 0 0.05 p value is less than 0 0.05 so it is significant at 95 percent confidence level uh, and then the second uh, independent variable is uh, the different programs we have got three programs program academic program vocational and the third one is what uh, program general right so program general is the reference category the reference category and program academic and program vocational have been compared to uh, reference okay now uh, this estimate which is negative 0.44 which is program academic which means that uh, if you if you take uh, the uh, difference of the effect because of program academic to that of program uh, uh, general the difference would be point uh, negative 0.44 similarly the difference would be negative 1.27 uh, when you take uh, program vocational with respect to program general so math is a statistically uh, significant uh, variable but we still don't know whether uh, program is statistically significant or not and we'll talk about it why it is not that easy or not that straightforward the marginal effect says that one unit increase in maths will change the log of count uh, of absence by 0 0.006 okay so that's the basic interpretation and the same interpretation can also be done with the other independent variable except the fact that you know there you have a categorical variable so there is a reference data so you always take the reference into account uh, marginal effect for a given category all right so uh, as you have said the program one which stands for program general is a reference category and all other categories have been compared so the other two categories have been compared to program uh, general okay now do we uh, are you sure that whether this is significant or not now if you look at the significant value for program academic is 0 0.01 which is significant here this is also significant but the significant the, the the estimates that we get here is nothing but on a comparison basis so this is program academic with program uh, general so this is more of a comparison and that is coming out to be significant but whether that variable itself is significant that for that we need another step okay we'll check the statistical significance of the second independent variable which is program by doing an ANOVA test so how we do is it we uh, build a model with program uh, in place 
or program as one of the independent variable and then we will build another model without the independent variable program okay so the first model which uh, the output of which is kept in m1 we build uh, the model like this we have the number of days of absence is equal to math score plus your program so this is model 1 the second model 1 is simply with math score without having program okay now when you do an ANOVA we'll try to see if that makes a difference or not okay if the presence of program in the model is making a difference to the overall estimation okay estimation process okay if that does affect or that has significant impact on how we model uh, the number of days of absence of a student then that is a significant variable else not if there is not much of a difference in these two models then program is not a very significant variable and how do we do that we actually um, you know use the ANOVA function and that will do a, li a likelihood ratio test uh, for the two models for the two negative binomial models and all you need to do is look at the p value and you see that it's it's significant right its value is 1.65 raised to the power e to the power minus 10 so that's less than 0.05 hence this is significant which means there is a significant difference here okay so there is a significant difference between the model 1 and the model 2 m1 and n2 that means program the independent variable program has a significant effect on the model or it is a very significant model because it is making a difference to the two models okay and that's the reason main reason why these two models are different because there is a presence of program in the first model and that's a significant uh, variable that's how we confirm it okay and once we confirm it the interpretation can be done from the first model itself so we can interpret uh, the output by looking at these two uh, coefficients for program all right now few precautions uh, needs to be taken while building a negative uh, binomial regression model firstly it should not be used for small samples so you should have a reasonably uh, large number of sample size in order to be able to use uh, negative binomial regression model secondly you should also confirm for over dispersion um, and and if there is over dispersion of zeros then uh, it will look like uh, you know an over dispersed distribution however because you know there will be more zero so it will be if it is zero here so there will be a lot of zero here and then the other values this will look like an over dispersed dispersion um, over dispersed uh, distribution but uh, you should not use negative binomial distribution in this case okay you rather should use zero inflated regression where there are a lot of zeros and we'll see uh, what zero inflated regression is in in another video but uh, wherever you have too many zeros in your data you might uh, mistake that as uh, um, or misjudge that as over dis uh, dispersed distribution but although that you know by definition it is but uh, in that case you should be more careful you should rather use a zero inflated regression instead of a negative binomial regression model uh, third thing is the outcome variable should always be non negative because it is a count of something and count of something cannot be negative so ensure that this is this is the case okay what are the real world uses of this model the real world uses can uh, be in many industry uh, such as banking uh, in in main industry in many activities uh, in banking analytics you can uh, model for count of default customers for different market segments uh, count of uh, you know, good customers uh, in different market segments uh, for marketing analytics you can also use a negative binomial regression model um, you can use uh, for you know for the for the dependent variable or to model count of repeat customers from different geographies okay uh, in hr analytics you can see count of employees acquisition across levels so wherever you have count data and you feel 
that uh, there is over dispersion uh, or, or the sample vari uh, the variance is more, more than the, uh, the mean then you can go ahead and use negative binomial regression model and there could be many other cases where you know this could be also useful thank you